I hate breastfeeding and I know that is so controversial because one, I do it, but two, everyone tells you that it's supposed to be so natural and that it comes easy and like you should just be able to figure it out. But the reality is it's not natural. It's a learning experience for both you and baby. It hurts at least for the first six weeks and it can just drain the life out of you. So today I am sharing with you as a fourth time mom, the things that they don't talk about breastfeeding, the establishing journey and how to work through it so that you can actually enjoy breastfeeding and have a good milk supply. So if this sounds interesting to you, stay tuned, give it a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that bell so you get notified when we upload every Monday and Thursday. And let's talk about the truths about breastfeeding. If this is our first time meeting, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. My name is Beck and I am a mom to four beautiful children and I have done the breastfeeding journey for each and every one of them, my youngest being three and a half weeks old. So I am in the thick of trying to establish my breastfeeding journey with him. And let me tell you, as much as the journey can differ from child to child, the beginning is the same. Even going into this nursing experience, I was mentally preparing myself for the fact that it was going to be challenging. My husband and I have some goals, I guess you could say, and some ways for him to support me because I struggle so much. At the moment, I'm having to see a midwife once a week because Edmund actually had really high jaundice levels when we were in hospital. And as a result, we need to get weekly weigh-ins. And during this week, I found out that newborns have a growth spurt between weeks three and four, which is the reason why presently, my breastfeeding journey is very <laughs> trialsome and it is just, it's hard to navigate. And I think that's the thing is no one talks about those first six weeks and just the mental mind game and the physical expectation and how your body is going to react to doing something that is so natural. Even though breastfeeding comes from you and it's not artificial in that sense, when you are starting your breastfeeding journey, you and Bob are having to learn how to do it together and every child is completely different. For me personally, three out of my four kids have been tongue-tied, which can affect their latch, which can affect your breastfeeding journey. So with Edmund, we checked him straight away and found out that he had a mild tongue-tie. We got it released within the first 24 hours, which I was super thankful for because we then found out within the next 24 hours that he had really high jaundice levels and I needed to feed him every three hours for an hour and do top ups which meant I needed to pump and that just put so much pressure on me personally and getting my milk out which is hard because in that first couple of days you're working off colostrum your milk hasn't come in yet it hasn't yet matured and so I was just having a lot of tactile experience on my breasts and when you're going from nothing to 150% it is really hard to adjust to it and to condition that area to have that much sensory input. From personal experience and chatting to lactation consultants and various midwives, a newborn feeding session, you're looking at roughly 40 minutes to an hour. And the reason why it's so long is because they're just not efficient at feeding yet. For me personally, when I am nursing Edmund, he is quite lazy and is quite sleepy. And that could be the fact that he did have jaundice levels that were quite worrisome. And so he just wasn't awake yet. But being such a small baby and my breast being large, he struggles to latch properly. And with the tongue tie, that's another complication. So when I'm nursing him, I have to be mindful that one, he's awake and actually getting milk from me, but two, that his latch is proper. Because if you don't have a proper latch, they will munch on your nipples and that hurts so much. When I am nursing, I'm having to be mindful of all of these things, reattaching him. I'm having to massage my breasts because sometimes I get clogged milk ducts and it's just all of those things that you have to be mindful of and when you are feeding three hourly 24 7 it can become really exhausting and draining and as a person you can start to feel like you're losing yourself this means that throughout the last three and a half weeks i am sore 
I know that this is the realities of starting a breastfeeding journey and that I usually give myself in my head a goal of six weeks. In six weeks time, things should hopefully settle down with my nipples, my breasts should not be as sore and we get into a bit of a rhythm. But the really hard thing is for me personally, when I pick up my bub, like any of them, they just see me as a milk supply, which is so disheartening because sometimes I would love to be able to just hold them and cuddle them the way that my husband does. But as soon as they're on me and they can smell milk, they just want to feed. Why do I do it? Why am I on my fourth time of figuring out a breastfeeding journey, trying to establish it when it's torture for me and my senses? And the thing is, I know that this doesn't last forever. And I know from previous experiences that once it's established and once your body is used to it, it is the easiest thing to do and is so convenient, but you just have to persevere through those first six weeks. After those six weeks, the sessions become easier, they become shorter. You honestly can get to a point where you are nursing for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes in total and you're done which that is the light at the end of the tunnel. So if I can just push through these first six weeks, I know that it will be worth it, both for Bub, for myself, for finances, and that's what I try and focus on. The other thing I mentioned that was a struggle is that Edmund's latch is not good at the moment, but I know with time, as he grows, he will become bigger than my breast, and his latch will become better because I'm not having to support and guide him to doing it. It will become natural for him, and that is another thing that I know is not gonna last forever is him having a bad latch and me having to support him, but he will get the hang of it and things will become easier. And then finally, your milk supply starts to find a good happy rhythm of your nursing sessions and routine and you start to hurt less. Your breasts aren't as engorged, your nipples are conditioned and things just become natural. You're able to put the baby on and not take that sharp breath as curl your toes and just be tense. You can put them on and have a conversation and not even notice that you're nursing and that is super duper convenient. And especially as a mum of four, it is so tricky to pack everything that I need for every kid. Knowing that I have nappy wipes and my boobs is like amazing when it comes to making sure that I can look after my newborn baby. So if you're like me and you want to give this a red hot go because you know that it is beneficial for Bub and that even though the pain and discomfort is so real right now and it can be a mental and physical struggle for you, you just wanna see if you can do it. Then here are some tips that I have found over the last three breastfeeding journeys that have really helped me in this fourth journey. The first thing that I highly recommend is getting a hucker. Now a hucker is a silicon pump that you can put on your other breasts to catch letdowns when you are feeding your baby. I've just done a nursing session before putting my son down for his morning sleep and I was able to catch the letdowns from my right breast as I was nursing my left and my right breast does not <laughs> produce as much milk as my left. And this is three weeks into nursing and I was able to catch about 40 mils, which for me is amazing. And this is my tip to you. Don't compare your milk supply. If you catch 20 mils, celebrate it. If you catch five mils, celebrate it. Don't be feeling the pressure that you have to catch hundreds of milliliters of milk and that you need to be storing at least a couple of liters in the freezer. Anything is better than nothing and you should feel so proud of yourself for catching anything. Now for me personally, I have tried everything under the sun for increasing my milk supply because I had have a really bad one. And now that I've learnt what works for my body, then I have a good one. So I would recommend trying everything that you read. I have done everything from eating oats, drinking at least three, water, three liters of water a day. I have tried making lactation cookies, also known as booby bickies. And for me personally, the booby bickies worked, but I was stacking on the weight. And I find in my postpartum journey, that's where I put a lot of weight on because I actually lose a lot of weight when I'm pregnant. 
So this leads me to vitamins and I find that vitamins really do help my milk supply and I just take two of them. I find taking fenugreek and the breastfeeding gold tablets enough to help me with my milk supply. I take one of each vitamin at breakfast and then one of each vitamin at dinner time and that really has helped me to feel confident in my supply. Obviously when I'm catching in my hucker, I notice a decrease of milk throughout the day which is perfectly normal. I don't know of anyone whose milk supply increases but the best thing is if you are catching in the morning and you're seeing a decrease in the afternoon and you need to give top ups, you've got your morning letdowns that you can top them up with. And my final recommendation if you are trying to give this breastfeeding journey a red hot go is set goals. Small reasonable goals. For me personally, my first goal is always six weeks. I want to be able to get through those first six weeks in establishing my breast milk. I know that it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be painful. I know that things haven't yet figured things out yet. Baby hasn't done it. My body hasn't done it. And there's so much working against you. But I know if I just get through those first six weeks, then I've got a step up and things will become slightly easier. Then after I reach my six week goal, my next goal is three months. I really wanna to get to three months. And then my next goal is six months. And I have been able to gradually increase my goal to the fact that with Phineas, my 18 month old, I nursed him for 10 months and the reason why I stopped him was actually because I fell pregnant with Edmund and I needed to have a break between Phineas and Edmund because that would have just been too much if I had continued nursing him all through my pregnancy and then started again. I just want to encourage you that you can do it if you want to. Obviously, there is no pressure in any of this. And for me personally, I know that persevering through those first six weeks really does help me. Knowledge is power. If you know that nights two and three are going to be difficult because Bub is going to cluster feed to get your milk to mature from colostrum over, then be prepared and you know, tell your husband to give you those supportive phrases that you need or maybe make some snacks or treats so that when you're getting up to nurse that you are filling your cup as well. Knowing that there's a growth spurt at three to four weeks can give you peace of mind that there's nothing wrong with your milk supply. It's just the fact that baby is putting on extra weight because that's part of their growth. It's having all of this knowledge that helps you to be reassured that you're not doing anything wrong when they start cluster feeding or they have bad nights or bad days or whatever is happening, that that's them just being a baby and that's them reaching their milestones. So definitely get in contact with a midwife or a lactation consultant if you have any concerns. I would love to connect with you, so please comment down below your breastfeeding journey, any tips or tricks you would like to share. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe and tap that bell so you get notified when we upload every Monday and Thursday because this parenting gig doesn't come with a rule book, we only have each other. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.